So you're thinking about moving to South Jordan, Utah, but you'll want to know the good and the bad about living in the area. I'm going to share with you in this video today is the good and the bad, the pros and the cons about South Jordan. So you don't want to miss this video and we're going to get after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and if you'd like to know everything there is to know about living in Salt Lake City, Utah and South Jordan like we're going to be talking about today, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications. That way you can be the first to know about the current market in Salt Lake City, Utah. My name's Steve Gilbert. I'm with eXp Realty and my team and I, we get calls and emails every day from people just like you that are looking to make a move to Salt Lake and we absolutely love it. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give us a call send us an email. The information is in the description below. We'd love to help you make a smooth move to Salt Lake City, Utah or to South Jordan like we're talking about today. So as I mentioned in this video, we are going to talk about the pros and cons of living in South Jordan, Utah. So let's start with location. And you know, the great thing about South Jordan is it's, it's still located close enough to Salt Lake City downtown that you're only about a 25 minute drive away. And traveling to the airport, you're only about 26 minutes. So very reasonable commute times, uh, especially for being located in the southwest uh, quadrant of the Salt Lake Valley. Now, if you happen to uh, be commuting down to Silicon Slopes, the Lehigh area, uh, if you work for one of these tech companies or one of, one of these uh, many startup companies that are located in the Lehigh Silicon Slopes area, you're less than 20 minutes. So uh, very convenient for uh, commute times. Uh, there is also a lot of uh, executive corporate offices uh, on the east side of South Jordan, right on the sandy South Jordan border. So. Um, as far as commuting to work, uh, there's a lot of great options, making it a very reasonable uh, commute as well. Now, the UTA track system, uh, which is the transit system, uh, one great thing about South Jordan is that tracks comes all the way down and the rail actually ends in Daybreak, South Jordan. So that's as far south as it comes. But that's the great thing is that you'll have the opportunity if that's your preferred method of commuting is to use the track system. And that track system will take you all the way up through uh, Salt Lake City and up to the University of Utah. And as I mentioned that any, any cities that are further south as you head into Riverton, Bluffdale, Harriman, you're not gonna have the tracks option. And so you're gonna be limited with that whereas South Jordan that's gonna open up uh, the options as far as your commute, uh, how you prefer to uh, commute to the office if you do work in the Salt Lake uh, City downtown areas or up by the University of Utah. With South Jordan as well, there's a lot of new construction options. Uh, new homes are being built all over the place. Uh, it continues to grow. Uh, we've got areas like Daybreak with a lot of growth and just a lot of communities throughout South Jordan with new construction. And when I went back and I looked at, uh, over the last two years, I looked at what percentage of homes uh, that sold were built from the year 2000 or newer. And that number was 90%. So that just goes to show you that uh, in South Jordan, your chances of, of finding a newer home are gonna be far greater than other areas in the Valley. So there's, there's people that always express concern about buying older homes, right? There could be the potential electrical updates that need to take place. There could be uh, uh, plumbing updates. And so by buying a newer home, you can tend to eliminate that or greatly reduce the chances of having uh, some of these major updates that need to take place. So South Jordan, you will find newer homes. And if that's what you prefer, if you like the newer look, the newer designs, then there's a lot of options that are available for you with that. Now, with that being one of the benefits to South Jordan, that also factors in one of the cons or downfalls to South Jordan. For the west side and for the newer construction in the west side of Salt Lake Valley, it has the highest median sales price. And so you are gonna pay more for your home in South Jordan. It is a very desired area and the median home price right now is 635,000. 
So that's going to be higher than the new homes that are built just south in Riverton, Harriman, areas like that. Because it is desired, obviously location, location, location is the name of real estate and you'll pay a little bit more for the home that you want in the South Jordan area. South Jordan is also going to uh, give you options with larger lots. So if you do like a little bit more space, if you don't like your neighbor so close, you don't want that neighbor in the backyard, you know, able to peer, you know, <laughs> peer through his window and into yours, there's lots of opportunities for homes with larger lots. So last year, uh, there was 175 homes that sold with one third acre lots or larger. If that's something that you're interested in, there's great opportunity with that. A lot of those homes, uh, in fact, you can find new homes with those larger lots now, but there's a lot of homes that were built in the early 2000s, you know, that 2005, 2010 era that have those lot sizes. You can find half acre lots and there's even acre lots in the South Jordan area as well. So there's some real great neighborhoods if you're looking for that. And then there's uh, certain communities that are available if you don't like the yard size. If, if you want a smaller yard because spending all day Saturday taking care of your yard isn't your idea of how to spend your weekend, there's certainly communities within South Jordan that offer that as well. Now, South Jordan does have a lot of shopping that's close by. And, you know, that's something that not all of these cities in the Southwest portion of the Salt Lake Valley offer. But South Jordan has a lot of options. And right next door, on the basically on the east boundary of South Jordan, you have the South Town Mall, you've got a Costco, you've got the Shields. And so this is super close, depending where in South Jordan you live. Those are uh, major shopping centers that give you a lot of options. And then for those that live right in the heart of South Jordan, you've got the district. So you've got the district and Megaplex theaters, and you've got all of the shopping and all of the restaurants that the district has to offer. So there's a number of restaurant options right there in the district. There's a number of restaurant options as on 106 South in the Redwood area and 106 South down into uh, the river bottoms by the river parkway system as well. No shortage of options with restaurants if you're looking to dine out, if you're looking for shopping as well. You don't have to leave the area. It's all right there and there's plenty of options. With that also naturally comes entertainment. So there's lots of uh, different entertainment options. I mentioned uh, the theaters, the movie theaters, Megaplex at the district. So if you want to catch a movie, it's right there in your backyard. You've got the Daybreak Trail System and the Ochre Lake for fishing. You've got the Parkway Ponds. There's three different ponds down by the Jordan River that offer fishing as well. There's a lot to do right there in South Jordan. You don't have to go far. You've also got the Equestrian Center. Now it's called the Bastion Center is the name of the actual covered arena there. But this is a hundred 120 acre equestrian park uh, with a racetrack, with rodeo grounds. It uh, actually hosts the Salt Lake County Fair every summer. The big arena, I don't remember the square footage, but it's a big arena and it holds uh, like the motocross races, the monster truck events. There's concerts that are held there. And so there's a lot of things that can be done right here. You don't have to travel into downtown Salt Lake or other areas of the valley for your entertainment needs. There's so much that's offered right here in the South Jordan area. One of the areas within Daybreak, or I'm sorry, within South Jordan is Daybreak. And uh, Daybreak is a master plan community and it's the largest in Utah, and it's one of the best and highly rated master plan communities throughout the nation. When this thing is all done, it's estimated that there's going to be close to around 20,000 homes. And so right now there's already thousands of homes then that are currently built. What's great about Daybreak is the amenities that is offered there. There's over 30 miles of walking, biking trails. There's dozens of different parks. Uh, if, in fact, I believe when I looked at it, there were over 30 little parks that you can go. So if you want to take your family or just, you know, enjoy spending time, you know, enjoying the grass and, and nature outside, lots of options there. You have the Ochre Lake. It's really a big pond, uh, but there's options with canoeing and kayaking. And the residents of Daybreak uh, can actually benefit by renting those things. They can rent canoes, they rent kayaks. And so those are all options for Daybreak residents. Uh, they've got Soda Row, which is a shopping and restaurant center. In fact, uh, Daybreak has the break sports grill. And so this is a sports bar and grill. It's one of the, the best rated bars 
and grills in Salt Lake County. And that's just right there in Daybreak. Even though you're not a resident of Daybreak, you can enjoy that lake. You can enjoy the paths and the walkways that, that go throughout the entire area. Now, what's one of the, the drawbacks to Daybreak? Well, if you live in Daybreak, you gotta pay for it. And so the HOA uh, is something that uh, you'll want to be aware of. Uh, if I remember right, uh, I think you're about $132 a month for your HOA fees, and it can go significantly higher than that. If you're in a condo townhome, I've seen them go up to $335 a month. Obviously, that's going to offer additional uh, benefits with that additional premium on the HOA, uh, but just be mindful of that. It's an additional expense that you'll want to budget for. With that HOA as well, just one of the other drawbacks is that there is a transfer fee, and so if you're going to be buying uh, or selling a home there, there's a half a percent transfer fee. And uh, with the median home price in South Jordan of uh, 635,000, you know, you, you got to factor in that half a percent. Several months ago, if you were buying, most likely you were going to foot that bill because we were in a seller's market. Well, now that that market's flipped and it's become a buyer's market, uh, there's a good chance you can get the seller to bear that expense now. So that is one great benefit to uh, the change in the market. One of the other drawbacks of the South Jordan area, uh, this would be for the outdoor enthusiast who likes to go to the mountains. Utah is known for the Wasatch Mountains. It's known for the skiing, for the mountain biking, for the hiking. South Jordan, if that's something that you wanna go and enjoy, you're gonna have to travel across the valley. So you're gonna have to move from the west side head over to the east side and head up the canyons. And so uh, there will be additional travel time, getting to the ski resorts, uh, getting to those hiking trails up the canyons. And so that's uh, one other uh, consideration to factor in is, you know, how often will you be doing that? And is that really a big deterrent or is it not really a big deal because maybe it only happens a few times a year. But this will also apply to mountain biking. There's not a lot of mountain biking options in South Jordan. Obviously you can ride a mountain bike on, on the surface streets and, and on the road bike trails uh, and on the trail systems around the communities. However, to get up back on the dirt path and to enjoy the mountain biking trails, especially down in Draper and Corner Canyon, the trails up in on the sandy bench and up in the Cottonwood Canyons, you're gonna have to drive across the valley again to, to get to those trails. You know, if you're an avid mountain biker, my next door neighbor, their kids are on the high school mountain biking team and all summer and fall long, and, and even in the spring, they are constantly mountain biking. If you're one that's always out there mountain biking, you know, keep that in mind. One of the other uh, drawbacks to the South Jordan would be uh, the secondary water system. In Salt Lake Valley and other parts along the Wasatch Frontier in Utah, culinary water and secondary water options are available to different areas. So everybody obviously gets culinary water, but the secondary systems are available to certain cities and some cities it's to certain areas. And so South Jordan, only about 10% of the homes or the properties that sold have a secondary water option. And so you'd have to be aware and mindful that during the summer as you're watering gardens and lawns, that there's gonna be that additional expense if you're watering lawns and gardens with culinary water. Whereas if uh, you know you head uh, to the city south in Riverton, it's almost all residents in Riverton can benefit from the secondary system. So there's a big savings when it comes to watering. And now if you go to the city north, which is West Jordan, there's almost no secondary water option. So at least South Jordan uh, does have some uh, pockets of secondary water uh, that is available. Overall, uh, South Jordan is, is a great area. I have lived in uh, two different neighborhoods in South Jordan, and from a personal experience, I can say that it has great people. They're incredibly friendly. I've always had a wonderful experience living in those areas. I've never experienced any crime issues while I was a resident there as well. In one of the communities that I lived in, it was fairly close to daybreak, so I was able to uh, personally enjoy and take advantage of the daybreak trail system. I would go and take my little kids and we would walk around Ochre Lake and it was just a lot of fun. So it, it was a, a great community, a great area. And I hope that you found this uh, video helpful as far as pointing out some of the, the benefits and some of the cons about South Jordan, Utah. And so whether you're looking to move in nine days or 90 days, uh, give us a call, uh, shoot us a text, send us an email. Uh, we'd love to help you make a smooth move uh, to Salt Lake, Utah, or South Jordan. And until then, I hope to see you around town.